What can you give for a twin, twin, twin? Wise watch. Let's go. What's up YouTube, this is Hill Phantom. I have now completed 48 hours with the Y smartwatch. I did part one earlier where I went through the unboxing, some of the basic specs of the watch, and then went out, did a run. I compared it to a Suunto watch I have just to get some factual findings about if the sensors in specific, the heart rate sensor is working as well as advertised. In that, I wanna wrap this up by today, just walking you through some of the pros and cons as I see them, and then ending with whether or not you should go out and buy this watch. The smartwatch itself is pretty awesome. However, there are some cons that I see. The interface itself is pretty slick. It's really easy to use. There's basic functionality. If I swipe up, I get to a mini menu, which is gonna offer a couple different things. It lets me know the temperature outside. It gives me some weather information. It allows me to adjust the brightness from slow, medium to bright. Now remember, this doesn't have an ambient sensor in it. So you are gonna be in there quite a bit, so it's not gonna adjust to daylight. So you will be using that. It also has an ability to turn on do not disturb or to turn off do not disturb. And then last Lastly, it has a button that you can hit where it will ring your phone. If you swipe down, you're gonna walk into the notification mode. Now that notification mode is just gonna list all the notifications that you have set up in the application that you want to get on your phone. A couple things about the notifications. It's pretty slick, they come in all right. Well, for me, I noticed something on Gmail where they come in about like batches of five or 10 at a time. And I don't know if that's something that I need to set up inside of Gmail, inside of the watch, or on my phone. I do know Gmail quite well. I do know my phone quite well. I don't think there's any settings there, but it's almost like it comes in as a batch process. Now the scrolling up and down is also something that's not ideal. You'll notice that it's a little bit jittery. It's just not as slick as it is moving throughout the other menus in the watch itself. Now you're only gonna get a little bit of information when you do get notification. It's not gonna be a whole list of what was set. It's just gonna be a small little blur. Sometimes it also excludes who it came from or a notification from Facebook, but it doesn't let me know that Johnny Ray hit me up about the twin, twin, twin watch. You're not gonna get a complete message. The other side of that is you're not gonna be able to scroll through a message like you would on an Apple Watch or an Android Wear Watch. Remember, this is $20, guys. Now, if you swipe right, that's gonna give you the data screen. That's just gonna give you information on how many calories you burned and how many steps that you did throughout the day. Now, if we swipe to the left, we're gonna get all the applications that ship with the watch. Now, I won't walk through the applications here, but I'll make some quick notes on the ones I like. Now, it comes with the ox sensor. I like that because right now, I don't really have a great way on the fly to measure my oxygen rate and at the times of COVID, don't ding me. Yes, COVID is here. Yes, it's still here. Yes, it's dangerous, but I like to know how much oxygen is in my blood. The heart rate sensor, I use it, but as I found, and we'll get into this on some of the cons, it's not really as precise as some of the other heart rate sensors that I've used. It also has your basic stopwatch, your basic timer, your basic alarms, its sleep tracks. Those all seem to be working pretty well. The sleep, in fact, is some, one of my favorite. I had never really worn anything with a sleep sensor on it or a sleep algorithm, but so far it seems to track with what I believe I get, which is about eight hours of sleep a night. I know, USD recommended. There's two other applications that I like, which is the weather. If I click the weather, it's gonna show me what it is today or currently outside. If I swipe up, it's gonna give me a three-day forecast. So I think that's pretty cool. So that rolls us into that integration, and this is a custom OS, right? So with the custom OS, you're gonna get things like really slick features. It works really well, it's pretty simple, uh, but you're not gonna get the backbone of having like a Google or an Apple. So I hope that I receive some updates. There's a lot of possibilities here. Right now we're stuck with the application it ships with. I would love to see an app store or some upgraded applications or some more features that I think is possible with a firmware update to this thing. So I'm looking forward to Wise and the engineering team pushing out some of those updates to us. All right, so what are the cons of this thing? So we, I want to temper this with some kids gloves because the cons, well, there are quite a few of them. But remember, this is twan, 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 $20, right? So if it's $20, eh, Let's just temper it with that. So let's go down the list. First and foremost, no ambient sensor. That means it's not gonna adjust and it's gonna be hard to see at times. I'm gonna need to go in, swipe up to get to that mini menu and adjust the, the brightness 
manually. Not a huge deal, but just a little ding on that. Notifications, well, let's say they're subpar. They only give you a little bit of information. They oftentimes don't include who it came from. You can't double click into the message itself and scroll through the entire message. You can't double click it and have it open, let's say Gmail on your phone. So it's rather limited to just simply, oh, someone hit me on Gmail. Oh, someone hit me on Instagram. Oh, someone gave me a Twitter to D, D. Okay, so for me, it was really limited in that regard. Now moving between the applications is quite easy, but once you're inside the notification, scrolling up and scrolling down is very laggy. Now again, $20 probably doesn't have a whole host of memory, but it just seems that part of it's rather buggy. We also are lacking a speaker, GPS, and microphone. So you're not gonna be able to talk to this thing again like a two, $300 watch, an Apple watch, which is even more expensive, but I'm okay not having those things for a $20 watch. Another thing we're missing is that App Store. Because it is a custom OS, we're not gonna be able to rely on third-party developers. We're gonna have to always rely on WISE to push out new updates, new product sets for this, whether that be new applications, new features, or they open up some type of marketplace. I don't know of any development program they have in the works, so I doubt there is one. So that would be a ding in terms of the custom software. Uh, just the expandability of this is nil as it stands right now, we're at the mercy of wise. Lastly, and most tragic, the heart rate sensor is trash on this. I compared it to my Suunto, also to a Polar heart rate monitor, and they were about five to 10's difference with the watch reading higher than those other products. I just think it's a factor of the cost. They couldn't put a good heart rate monitor in it, so use it as a reference point, but don't put a whole lot of stock into the heart rate monitor. The ox sensor seems a bit better. I do have another oxygen sensor that I tested against this, and they're about a one point difference. Now remember a one point difference in terms of oxygen levels is quite big. Again, this run red low, unlike the heart rate monitor. So if I was at 98% uh, my other one that's pretty pricey and I'm at 97% here. Again, worth it because on the fly, I can test my blood ox. Now, what are some of the advantages of this watch? Well, there's a lot, but mainly it's $20. For $20, you're getting a smartwatch with notifications. You're getting a, well, budget, heart rate sensor, a decent ox sensor. I mean, the thing is pretty cool. I like the fact that I can update my custom artwork or any of my photos. I can switch it up, I can customize the clock faces. That's a really neat feature of this watch. For all the basic, it hammers it. I've got everything I need, a timer, a stopwatch, a way to run. The running application actually tracks my pace. Although that pace was a little bit off, you know, still, it gives me an idea. So for what I'm coming down to is that 20 is just way too cheap to ignore for something like this that gives you basic features but also gives you some reference points from your sensors uh, and it really is built quite well it looks way more than $20 like like way more I don't like the fact that it kind of looks like an Apple Watch. That does not please me in the least. I would have liked a little bit better of a design. You know, there's some bevel issues. It's not a complete screen. So up close, again, you're gonna notice that there are some, uh, you know, things that, that make it look a little cheap. But other than that, um, you know, the way it moves, the custom OS does, while it does lack, in some application and some future development, in my opinion, by closing out third-party application developments or not having a way to expand the feature of the walks via some type of marketplace. Um, it's 20 bucks, folks. It's the jam. So would I recommend this? Absolutely. I would recommend this for anyone. For me, it's a kick around watch. If this thing lasts for a year, who cares? It's a $20 bill. I love this for kids. If you have a kid, I think this is a great watch for them. The reason I say that is it's easy to use and also there isn't those third party apps that can get them in trouble. It's a really closed ecosystem, so they're gonna get some basic things that they can play with and it's not gonna break mom and dad's pocketbook. So with that, go out, get it, run, go forth, order it. I think it's sold out, but you can get it soon. Pre-order, let's go. Wise Watch, another win. I'm Hill Phantom. Please like and subscribe. I need you. Let's go. Twan twan. Yeah, yeah.